Do you think you could sleep? I tried to act normal during dinner and was sort of able to finish everything, but she still seemed worried. I'll be okay. While I can't see as well as before, I can still see when you're not telling me the truth. Do I really have to tell you everything? I regret the words as soon as they leave my mouth. <sighs> What's wrong with me? I look at Ai. She hasn't responded. But her serious expression somehow eases me. No anger, no sadness. I will stay with you tonight. If she returns tomorrow, then you can request her instead. Why do you think I need someone? You told us long ago how much you miss being around others like your family. Am I incorrect? I don't know what I want. I just want to see these images to st I just want these images to stop already. Rolling it away has yet to work. It just keeps repeating itself again and again. I am sorry. Nothing for you to apologize for. Perhaps if I had intervened sooner, you wouldn't have gone through that. What do you mean? You knew where I was the entire time? I only had a vague notion. H how exactly did you two find me? It is the same way I can always tell where Jinha is. She points to the side of my neck where she's bitten me way before. The mark I have left in both of you. I almost pinched myself in the same spot out of frustration. So you could have found me. If I was actively looking, perhaps, though your mark was already fading. I assumed you did not want to be found until I discovered you were in distress. I... I didn't really want to leave. She could have helped me earlier and saved me from all of this. What is wrong with me? None of this is her fault. Or mine. No, it's his fault. His and all those others like him. And all those others like him. I'm sorry if I sound upset t at you. I apologize for not understanding you better. I was feeling rather guilty when you left. For what? Keeping you here against your will all this time. You really did think you were helping me though, right? That does not excuse my behavior. It also went against everything I stood for. I should have known better than anyone after all what it means to be free. To be free, huh? Selfishly keeping you here with me, that's been my biggest regret. Really? What about... Not the people that were... No, because they were trying to kill me. I will always defend myself at all costs. I guess not everything will change for her. Do you still see this as a kill or be killed sort of world? Instead of the resounding yes, I expect, she, lo she actually looks confused. I'm not sure. Why is that? Because there are people like you and Jinha in this world. Hmm. I have not seen your honest smile recently. I did not realize I would miss it, so... She's smiling back. I have to look away in order to hide the rising blush on my cheeks. Eh, why does she make me react like this? She would have said it so casually in her other forms, but now it's... Do you really plan to stay with me? If you have nightmares, I can wake you up. Is that satisfactory? I would appreciate that. Then it's decided. Without further ado, she hops into my bed. Uh, you were planning to sleep next to me? I can share your body's warmth with this body. Er, right, a snake. She's a snake. Alright, fine. I immediately latches onto my side when I slide in next to her. You know you're not a kid, right? Humans are really quite warm. <laughs> what is so amusing? Remember when you were little and got to decide whose bed to share, you merely went with Jinha? Though I guess Jinha is your favorite. That is not as it seems. She eases her grip on me and pulls back a little to give me a more Good to give me more breathing space. Oh? I picked Jinha because I did not want you to grow attached to me as a child. I want, it, I want you to see me as a prospective partner after all. <sighs> wow. 
Well, that's, uh, not romantic in the least when you say it like that. I looks flustered for the first time. B but I'm serious. She's so cute like this. You should sleep. Are you pl not planning to? No, I was just planning to watch you in case you got nightmares. I can't tell if that's sweet or borderline creepy with the way she talks. Sometimes I gotta remember you aren't quite human. Why do you say that? You are unquestionably honest. Oh, is that bad? For me, no. Honestly goes a Honesty goes a long way, even if it lacks tact. Perhaps I will learn this tact that you speak of in time. Don't you already know what it means? Yes, but if I wanted to stay with you, perhaps I should learn to do it properly. You don't have to try so hard, you're already charming in your own way. In what ways? I'm getting tired, so I'll tell you some other time. <laughs> I suppose I should be patient. Sleep well. Good night, I. No, not again. Huh? Do not worry, this is but a dream. This is clearly the beginning of a nightmare. Not if I am around. Here we go. See? Nothing to worry about. Why don't we pick something with a nicer ambiance? Much, much better. Huh? Could this be another prison? Sad to say, but I wouldn't be surprised anymore. Nothing of the sort. So then, why am I here? I am only here to help you, so that means... You need someone to talk to? What? I'm perfectly fine. I will get through it. That I agree with. You will definitely get through this. I do, however, feel that it might be easier to talk to a stranger. Is that... Weird to not want to talk to someone you already know about it. Someone you. Or, it's not. A, it's nothing unusual. The closer you are to someone, the scarier it may seem to confide certain things to them. You are afraid their perception of you might, may change. I see. Do I have to? T do I have to tell you what happened then? The thought of it makes me feel cold and jumpy all over. A sense of panic starts to take control again. Huh. Only if you want to. Otherwise, I can also tap your memories if you want me want me to start from there. Before you do that, could I know more about you? Of course, I think you may know, already know me more than you realize. What, what do you mean? She points to her face. This is my face. Eyes face? Is that what she calls herself? She has your face? Wait a minute, her powers? She was able to transform the first time because of the blood in the water, and... That means... You are her owner? See, you already know all about me. You've even seen me grow up. H how could that be? This is one of the few beautiful mysteries of this world. Could you tell me your relation with I? You were her owner, yes? She is one of the few things I've loved most in my life, and here I am, in her life, in some form. I never told us what happened to you. I died a foolish, ugly woman. That was all there was to it. I'm sure that wasn't true. She sure is beautiful, too. I am sure she would say the same about you. No way, I'm just plain silly me. And now I'm just... Hmm? Say what you really feel. The words stick in my throat, scratchy and prickling as if trying to choke me from the inside. Bro broken. I feel broken, and I don't know why I feel this way. I feel so ashamed and weak, why couldn't I do more? Why do I feel this pathetic when I didn't even suffer the worst of it? The other woman... They... I have trouble catching my breath between the sobs. A warm hand pets my hair. Shh, take a deep breath for me, that's good. Once more. 
Could we just stop talking about me for once? If you would like. Sorry. Could you tell me about yourself? I thought my life was supposed to end happily ever after, but that did not come true. You sure you would like to hear it? Even if you're no longer with us, I believe your story is worthy of being told and remembered, at least. Very well. I was a very rich girl, but so well off that it isolated me from the rest of the world. I was taught to read and write, but mostly trained to be a good wife for my future husband. My only friend was my beautiful silver koi, a gift that my father gave to me at one of my earliest birthdays. My father wished for me to have its hardiness and years of longevity. So that's how I came to be yours. Indeed, in the time, she did respond to my feedings and was receptive to my touch. I talked to her about everything, not that I was sure if she could understand a bit of it. You'd be surprised. In time, I was arranged to marry a man of my father's choosing. He was very handsome and polite. Was he kind? He was at the time. I believed we were both happy, at least initially. However, it was difficult for me to get pregnant and produce an heir. I did all sorts of things in order to make it work, including taking all sorts of medicines from doctors and among other healers. And the stress fragmented our relationship. What happened? We got into fights and other painful things. I'm afraid- I'm too afraid to ask further. Mirai pats my head. I can relate to what you're going through as a result. I have a feeling my situation is not as bad as yours. It's not a competition about whose life is worse than the other. We both feel broken over it. It's not fair. In that place, I should have done something differently. Correct. Life has never been fair. You did not have control of the situation. You were at someone else's whim and choices. It is the same for the others, including myself. But... What you can control is what you do from here, even if it's taking small steps at first. You think I can? I do. First you must let go of the guilt, then look forward from there. I don't know if I can. In my case, after all that he'd taken from me, something that could never be returned, I went into a deep, sad spiral after that. You have people that care about you. But... I think deep down you know you can do it. You already gave me your answer the first time we met. What do you mean? My name is your innermost wish. But I don't know what it means, if it means anything. I'm sure you know someone that does. I am awfully sorry that our meeting has to end now. But I'm not ready. Take your time, go at your own pace, do what's right for you. How odd, a dream can leave me feeling this way. As I wake up slowly, I realize there's an arm still wrapped around my waist. I. Oh, I. Hmm. Her only response is a sleepy mumble. We should get up. Mm, no, it's warm here. How about we eat something? Later. She really refuses, <laughs> really refuses to budge. Her human form has made her pretty lazy. Wait, what is that implying? Eh? Well then, how about we take a swim? Yes, I am ready. She does a few quick arm stretches, then quickly makes her way out. See you in a little bit. Ha, <laughs> I better not make her wait. I half expected to see I already in the water, but instead she is pacing around the pond, seeming a bit aggravated. What's wrong? I... She refuses to finish her sentence. Ah, uh, could it be? The mighty I does not know how to swim. <laughs> I do too, just not in this new body. <laughs> Why don't you just shift to your other form like before? In a bit. Low on energy to shift. My powers still aren't working out so well either. I just need more recovery time. Do you not want to swim then? We could just dip our feet for now. Oh, yes. 
I do not think you had a nightmare last night. Yeah, I guess it wasn't a nightmare, but... What happened? I met Mirai again. What did she say? She, uh, she talked about herself. Uh, then I need to mention something. While I am able to read yours or Jinha's memories, and to an extent the reverse is also true, I am unable to do so with my owner's memories. Why is that? I believe it is because she was not alive when... I'm sorry for your loss. It has been a very long time. I am honestly a bit jealous. Why would you be? Because I have never seen her. That must be difficult. What would you ask if you saw her again? I would like to know what became of her and about her life ending that way. What do you think happened? I believe she was murdered. You, you really think so? There was so much fighting and turbulence, random things were thrown into the pond. Increasingly often, we were all spooked. Then, all the... blood. I hold on to I and rub her arms. I will manage, but thanks. Looking at Ai's face reminds me of Mirai. It feels pretty surreal. Could that mean I am in love with Ai, or is Ai actually Mirai? Ai straightens up and stares into the distance. What is it? I am not quite sure. Just restless, I would say. It does not feel right to be so powerless. It sounds troubling for sure. It is increasingly incredibly frustrating. This puts all it it is incredibly frustrating. This puts us all in a vulnerable position. Why do you think that? I will not be able to protect you as I promised. I think we'll be fine. I stand up and pull her into the shallows where it's only knee deep. This body still can't swim. No, but we could still do this. I cup some water in my hands and splash it to her. Ah, uh, you dare to splash me? She tries to splash me back, but I escape to the deeper end of the pond. <sighs> no fair. Nothing you can do about it. You're too clever to just follow me over here. Through valiant effort, I managed to not childly stick out my tongue at her. Just you wait. When you return, you cannot stay out there for long. She's absolutely right. Better return before I run out of energy. It'll be tough for I to save me right now if something happens. I paddle my way back slowly, a scary smile growing on I's face as I do. Still got that predator drive though. Somehow she's able to pull me out of the water. The smooth human arms grasping me seem to have some kind of unfair strength. I lays me on the pond edge and proceeds to sit herself right on top of me. I got you now. I can only burst out giggling and I try to hide it behind my hand. But she grasps my hands in hers and moves to pin it above my head. Leaning over me like this, she brings her face closer to mine. A soft hand strokes along my jawline. I sit up immediately. We should have our meal now. Quick as I can, I flee back to the house and immerse myself in the kitchen. Jin has right. That was delicious. Of course it was, I made it after all. Cooking with Ai, that's certainly a new experience, but it was really fun. I tried to sample every ingredient and seasoning, both raw and cooked. As she realized, her taste buds have seemed immatured. She should have left the chili peppers alone, though. Will we be able to keep having fun like this? Since... I has kept an obvious distance from me since the pond incident. It's not like... It's not at all like her usually touchy-feely self. Is she upset with me? I catch I looking up again and follow her gaze out towards the garden. Something the matter? She has returned to us. Jinha? Let us prepare her dinner as she slowly makes it back. Yes, let's. I apologize I didn't make it back in time to share a meal with you two. 
Don't be, we're just happy to have you back with us. Jinha eyes eye, seemingly waiting for her response. Really now, both of you. Ai refuses to meet her eyes, shrugging instead. You are back where you belong. I almost want to pinch Ai. Jinha gets a good chuckle out of it. I can tell you <laughs> miss me most of all. Then, by the way, the food is absolutely divine. It probably tastes better because you have not been eating the enough. True, hunger makes even the half-rotten stuff taste delicious, huh? Don't worry, Lin. I'm absolutely fine with just one meal a day. How are things now? You are back much sooner than I would have expected. I was a bit worried. I believe we have things under control, but it's still not something I could leave unattended. You're always trying to save everyone. If it's within my ability, I will continue to strive to help as many as I can. We had best let you rest early then. As you can see, we are both doing fine without your supervision. That is great news indeed. Jinha looks at me and seems to know all too well. Does my face give it all away? I will return to my room. Could I meet with you, Lin? Sure, I'll come over. And I'll be in my room then. Could I see you after? Hmm, yes, I would like that. My apologies. We could have stayed in the dining room if I w wasn't going to stay. There's a little more privacy in your room, though. Ah, yes. I must teach Ai about eavesdropping. <sighs> Her old habits as a creature haven't gone away. So, how are you feeling? Fine, I think. I can't really tell any differences with the immortality portion. Ah, yes, that. You don't really notice until you hurt yourself. You may feel invincible, but you still feel pain like anyone else. How is I treating you? Very well. I had a great time watching her struggle with being unable to swim. Really, now? Oh, who? <laughs> oh, what I would have given to see that. She probably wanted to hide in a hole from embarrassment if you're the one watching. All too true. How is everybody doing? Similar to before, I am confident we will make it through. If anything, I'm worried about the other part of the recovery. Which is... The ordeal of it all. Where to go from here. Though, the disease seemed to be distracting them as they take time to adjust. I see. How has it been going for you? Uh, I don't know. I guess it's sort of there in the back of my mind. I try to push it there, but sometimes it just comes on all at once, overwhelmingly. I'm also worried that now it's sort of formed this being in my mind that seems way too alive to be just a dream. Tell me about this dream. There is this woman that looks like I, but she has black hair and clothes I've never seen before. D did she ask you to give her a name? Yes, how'd you know? She came to see me as well about a year after I disappeared. She seems to show up during times of extreme distress, another of I's many unexplained abilities. How often has she appeared to you? Only a few times. I haven't seen her in a very long time. Is she who she uh, says she is? That? <laughs> is she who she says she is? Yes, she was Ai's owner. My guess after seeing Ai's full human form is that she's the template that Ai unconsciously referenced. A template? Is Ai actually her then? No, they have vastly different personalities actually. Ai looks like her on the outside, but is definitely her own soul and spirit. I'm glad to hear that. It must have been difficult to see that they share the same face. If it's easier, imagine she is a twin sister. <laughs> that makes it a bit easier, yes. In my version, she called herself Kayo. Oh, I called her Mirai instead. Mirai, is it? Do you know what that means? She told me it me meant something about me. Yes, her name means the future. So something related to me in the future? Jinha gives my shoulder a pat. Would you like me to stay and help you through this? Oh no, don't do that. I'm sure the girls need you way more. Still. Please, I'll feel more guilty if you stay because of me. Okay then, we'll take it slow. I know it's no easy process. 
Mirai is wonderful to talk to as well. Sometimes it is much easier to discuss certain things with a stranger, and she also has her own experiences to draw upon in assisting you. She was able to help you then? Yes, she decided... She helped me decide what I should do with Ai once I found her again. I see, thanks. Always a pleasure to help. Don't let me keep you long. I think Ai is waiting for you. Yes, but I am serious. She places her hand on my shoulder. Should you need me, I will be there for you. I place my hand on hers. I know, I appreciate it. Off to see the queen. I think her new form is rather becoming of her. She gets embarrassed way easier now. <laughs> that she does. Well, have a good night. Night, Junha. Junha has made a point of regularly coming back by to check up on us whenever she has, a ch has the chance. As for I and me, we've been picking the vegetables Jinha so carefully grew, and are doing our best to maintain her garden. Some of our days are almost like before, though now it's me trying to teach Ai how to swim. She's also been sleeping in Jinha's room, stating her attic is too cold for her new form. I can't help but wonder if she's trying to avoid me or missing Jinha. Perhaps both. Whenever Mirai shows up in my dreams, I talk to her about anything of interest to us. Trivial things, funny things, everything. We even talk about her homeland, her culture, her lifestyle, and I. How are you feeling today? Better. I is still maintaining her distance from me, though. At most, she'll nudge me with her elbow, but she's not as affectionate anymore. How does that make you feel? I feel... flustered. I know she's trying to give me space, but I worry that I'll still react the same way if she tries to show affection. And... the same time, I miss it too. It's not her fault, though. I am sure she does not blame you for being this way. Does looking at me make it difficult? Sometimes, yeah. The same face and voice can make it seem like I'm talking to her at times. For a little while, I was kind of shaking about who I thought I was in love with. A dead girl reanimated would have been a much, a bit much. Mm, I see what you mean. I wonder if it's wrong to fall in love with her, though. Is that related to her or yourself? What are you most afraid of now? I don't know. Perhaps you are afraid to love or feel that you are unworthy of being loved. This one you call I, based on what you've told me, sounds like she has no sense of boundaries, lacks finesse in speech, displays a high level of narcissism, and is also quite controlling. Well, when you say it like that, she sounds pretty bad. Really, it's a matter of semantics. Fortunately, it does sound like she has something quite important for the relationship to work. Which is... She's willing to become a better person for you. But doesn't that mean she has to change who she is? Maybe I need to change myself too. Oh no, maturing as a person is one thing. You should never change yourself for a relationship. Is a relationship not about compromise? The little things are fine, but you should never compromise. What makes you, you. The point of being in a relationship is to find someone that complements your needs, wants, and deepest desires. They should be in love with you in the same way you love yourself. That's a unique way to look at it. Being willing to give up anything and everything to be with that person sounds quite romantic. But truly, you don't realize the sacrifice and parts of yourself given up to get, to get there. What was it like for you? I wish I knew all this at the time, then perhaps I could have saved myself. I'm sorry for what you went through. It was a tempestuous end to a complicated life. Oh, how appropriate. Keep my words in your thoughts. I will, thank you. The days go by in a blur. Her words have left an impression on me, engraved themselves onto my very being. Now, 
Do I know what I want to do? Yes, I. Can I come in? Of course. I apologize if I interrupted your slumber. I haven't gone to sleep yet, actually. Oh, don't give me that face. It's been getting better each night now. That's reassuring. What brings you here? I wanted to show you something I have finally finished. She brings out a cloth-wrapped package of some sort. I take it from her hands. To my surprise, it seems to be something quite light and small. Shall I open it? Yes. Unfurling the cloth reveals a familiar rice bowl. Wait a second. This bowl has been broken before, but now it's even nicer before. Shiny gray lines fill where the cracks were before. Is that silver? Correct. This is a unique form of restor restorative art called Kintsugi. The philosophy behind it is wabi-sabi. Wabi-sabi? It means to embrace the beauty that can be found in what is flawed or imperfect. If anything, it is now more beautiful than before, given a new breath of life. Tears roll down my cheeks as she explains all of this to me. Uh, are you okay? I did not mean for this pottery to upset you in this manner, let me just- I hurriedly raised my hands to stop her from taking it from me. N no, it's not like that. I'm happy. Really? You don't believe me? Tears are not normally a happy gesture, only humans cry tears, so it's rather confusing. <laughs> we sure are. I wipe away the tears while feeling a bit embarrassed. Thank you, I really do appreciate the gift. I stare at it, tracing the silver inlay with my finger. Somehow it feels like I've finally been able to unshoulder a huge burden. Lynn. Hmm? I places both of her hands on my shoulders. I think you are more beautiful than ever before. She places a kiss on my cheek. Well, I should let you sleep now. C could, could you give me a hug? You sure? Yes, with pleasure. She hugs me softly. I can kiss your cheek again too. <laughs> you sure are greedy. I am merely enjoying the new feelings that come with this body. I can feel her laugh reverberating in our bodies close together as we are. Then how about kissing my lips? Without a second thought, she presses her lips against mine. It's surprisingly soft and tender, unlike last time. But she pulls away all of a sudden and retreats a little. Ah, uh, sorry. Is something wrong? No, it's just me. I have noticed that kissing is very... addictive. I felt it, be it best to stop immediately before I get carried away. What if... I feel the same way? Would you like to continue? My nod is met with a swift, enthused kiss, firmer than before. More f f fervent, more needy? But I refuse to take the kiss any deeper. Is she waiting for my permission? I look at her lips, to which she responds with her tongue. It gets so intense that I finally have to pull back to catch my breath. I seems to be blushing, only now I notice that my hands has been resting on her chest. S -s sorry I, I didn't know. She grabs my hands before I could fully pry it away. Could I be honest with you? Is she mad at me? I can only nod. I... want you to touch me. It feels nice. I don't know if... I don't want you to be disappointed in me. She kisses the palm of my hand, softly holding it between her own. She waits for my response. Could we stay this way? Is this... acceptable? She wraps her arms around me in a reassuring hug. Yeah, that's perfect, actually. Music to my ears. We remain in each other's embrace until I breaks contact. You aren't disappointed? Never. The tension visibly drains from her posture and she collapses sideways onto the bed in relief. Ah, uh, that's more than enough for me. Oh, <laughs> you are a lot easier to read lately. Only when I'm around you, I, fi I found I can relax. 
Is that right? I plop down next to her and stare at her face. Her fingers rub itself back and forth over the top of my hand. Of course. She directs my hand to the small of her back. I will not shy away from you so we can go at a pace most comfortable for you. I'd like that. Eyes overflowing happiness has her rushing, barely managing to stop herself before she could steal a kiss. Her face retreats a little. My sincerest apologies, I need to work on my impulsivity. I chase her with a quick peck. I love your kisses. My hands draw circles on her back as she practically melts in my arms. I shall take one more then, for good measure. This kiss is the sweetest one she's given me yet. Good night. Good night, I. Junha has returned for good now that, now that all the women and children who'd been effect, inflicted made a near full recovery. Actually, they'd practically kicked her out, feeling incredibly guilty for keeping her for so long. We all returned to our old routine as, I, as if I had never left in the first place. Lin? Lin? Hmm? Were you daydreaming? Oh no, definitely was lost in thought though. What were you thinking about? I was just enjoying this moment together. I had this moment of, I am home now. I am sure the feeling is mutual. How I wish this moment would last. Our little utopia. Wake up. Hmm? You need to wake up now. I sit up, rubbing the sleep out of my eyes. What's, what's wrong? Someone has come. Someone? This is all my fault. Calm down, I. This is not your fault. Of course it is. Were my powers not so limited, my barrier would have kept them out. Takes a little time before the situation finally sinks in. W what do we do? Do we run? That's already clear. I will dispose of them. We will not resort to that. Let me talk to them. Perhaps they are simply a lost weary traveler. If you fail to do so, they will answer to me. The tension that I'd almost forgot roars back to life, crackling almost tangibly between the two. I have some leftovers and a blanket we can give them. We will both stay here. Hmm. I bet they will return. Let's have faith in Jinha's abilities. Ai is already making her way out of the- in the direction Jin has disappeared. Ai, she said to wait here. She has no command over me. We are only observing. What if they try to harm her? I guess we should watch out for her then. In the dark- In the darkness, I could just make out Jin has form. Our large visitor seemed to have hidden himself in the shadows of the trees. That shadow seems very familiar, isn't it? I gestures for me to hide behind a tree before moving in closer to Jinha. Please be safe. Lin, is that you? Who? I spin around to track the direction of the voice. Quick as lightning, I has grabbed someone and slammed them against the tree. Happening so quickly as it did, his shrieking draws the attention of both the visitor and Jinha. I don't hurt him. I had immediately recognized him. He finally stops screaming while I holds him in place. Lin, you know this creature? I am more than just a creature. She drops him onto the floor impassively, watching him trying to catch his breath. She's a snake goddess. Y you've got to be joking. I, I humbly ask for your forgiveness for my insolence. He immediately bows her head to the floor with a loud thud. That must have hurt. Is that how I used to be? I notice I finally relaxing a little as she stares him down. Stay there until I say so. As you wish. I immediately recognize the visitor in the trees. It's him, isn't he? I starts to head over, but Jinha immediately steps between them. I, you were supposed to let me resolve this. This is more than you can handle. You didn't even notice the second one, and you... She points to him. She, some may call me a demon, but you are the most dangerous one here. You reek of long-forgotten blood. We wish you no harm. 
Could my partner rise? He looks like he's dug his head into the ground. Hmm. As long as you both stay where you are. An slowly rises, but ma maintains his position for me. I can't believe you are alive. How can that be? An anger rises within me. No thanks to you. I was saved by the snake goddess. May he... I... She, she, she keep you forever safe. It's been so long since I've heard my village prayers like this. It's truly worked. The plan actually worked. What plan? You left me to die. I didn't have time to explain then, but we captured a number of rats and mice to feed the snakes, hoping it would be enough to sate them or the snake and the snake god. You honestly left my fate to a bunch of rats as sacrifice? We also drugged them to help the snakes sleep. I look at eyes for confirmation, who instead looks extremely displeased. Only half were asleep since they weren't all that hungry. Some plans are still dumb plans. But, but, the snake god just came for you in the end. Do I tell them it was some coincidence? I think we should leave th these two be. They'll surely have a lot to discuss. <sighs> you touch a hair on her head and I will take you and your lover boy both to your graves. Half expecting I to be chastised by Jinha, I glance her way and instead find her regarding the scene with a similar expression. Yeah. Loverboy has both of his hands raised in agreement. I wave at Ai to let her know I'm fine with the situation. They move slowly out of earshot. Really, An has never been that bright, so seeing him making a poorly concocted plan isn't unusual. <sighs> what did you honestly think was going to happen if I survived the pit trial? You would be externated of the crime and we would get married as planned. Are you forgetting the fact that I was never guilty in the first place? If anything, you were committing adultery. Well, technically we weren't married yet, and we weren't exactly dating. On. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I really should have shouldn't have left you like that. I just freaked out when you saw me. It escalated immediately after that. If things could go wrong, it surely did that day. He didn't help the situation with that half-assed thing he did with you earlier, either. As talky as ever. Was I just some tool for you to marry, give your parents children, and then still have lover boy on the side? You were never a tool. My parents were adamant I'd consider marriage the moment I returned. They had all these other girls already picked out for me to decide from. I could easily guess I wasn't on that list. Instead, I picked you, because you were my best friend. I thought if anyone was going to understand me best, and I am to spend my entire life with her, it would have been you. I don't know what to say. The pain and hatred that is slowly burning all this time, it's no longer growing inside. You have every right to hate me, I get that. I'm really glad to see you're alive, though. And with a goddess to boot, miracles can happen, huh? I honestly stopped believing in anything after going through that stupid war. What did you see? Things I wish I wouldn't wish on my own enemy. Wait, that's not right. I guess I do believe in one thing. His train of thought is all over the place, as always. What is that? Love. You always were a huge sap. As he would say, I am a lover, not a fighter. I tried to run away in my first battle, actually. A coward, maybe, or the sane, only sane one out there. He was originally sent to kill traitors, but I guess he took a liking to me and saved me. We ended up finding a secret enemy hideout, and somehow everything lucked out. He took care of me ever since. I'm sorry you went through that. Sympathy? From you? No, just pity. Huh. Well, I do appreciate our childhood together, even if that's the reason, and from the looks of it, he seems to eye my clothes. That dress fits you well, and you don't seem as skinny as before. Those two must have been taking good care of you. You need to stop saying everything that's on your mind out loud. Oops, sorry, old habits die hard, huh? The most important question is, why are you here now? We are quite far from home. Ah, yes, yes, you are right, huh? Where to start? So much has happened. Shortly after you disappeared, the village fell into a rough time. It was the first time in ages where our crops failed to meet last year's harvest levels. The elders were sure we were cursed. What do you believe? It's all hogwash. Chances are the weather just hasn't worked out, or maybe our methods aren't as efficient, effective as before. But since people are superstitious, they'll believe anything to blame their issues on others or unseen supernatural forces. 
I will agree with you on that, but what does it have to do with you both being here? Desperate times call for desperate measures. One of the elders swore they saw a white snake creature come and take you. They felt it best to find this creature to dispel the curse that's been befallen. That's befallen on us. So they sent all of us young guys and some old fogies in this endless journey and... You mean, other village men are here? An nods at me. At the base of the mountain making a camp. Are you scouts then? Yes, we were sort of blindly going around for a while, but then we heard a rumor about a monster that sounded awfully familiar to the white snake creature and came to check it out. Honestly, I didn't expect this endeavor to be to bear fruit, but it felt like we were chasing a frivolous dream. It's ruling, ruining all my plans. Your plans? Yeah, I hoped we were going to fail after this expedition, then we can run away for good. You don't want to stay in the village? Not after what happened to you, and I realized it's always the same thing. Someone else is using me for their own means or indirect gains. My parents have two older boys anyways, so it's not like I'm irreplaceable to anyone. What do they plan to do once they meet the goddess? Ask her to remove, remove a non-existent curse? If that's the case, then I will expect it would be what... I suspect it will be what we do with all snakes we find. They plan to trap and keep her? Shocked, I shout this out so loudly that the other two visibly startle. Judging by your reaction, that doesn't sound like something you'd agree with. Of course not. She's not an animal we can take and use with what we want. We can't do that to someone like her. She's not human either. Her being a goddess will make her... even more valuable to them. It's far more complicated than that. It's as a matter of principle, this is not right at all. Even if I tell them we didn't find anything, they still want to search this entire mountain if they must. I haven't asked you why you are here either, though I suspect that you are living nearby with those two. Also, if you haven't already realized, you can return safely. Return with us safely. Don't you want to see your family again? As much as I love to see my family, I can't in good conscience do so knowing that the price is betraying one of my dearest companions to be used by my own village. We have arrived in an unusual pickle, haven't we? A different kind of hatred coils inside me now, but I know getting angry won't help my cause. Can I ask you how you feel about this situation? It's ridiculously silly. Even if they take her by force like that, she might refuse to do anything they want. But given how desperate they already are, they might... That's something I don't even want to imagine. But I am a lowly soldier, but I'll do my best I can to lead them away from your home. I suspect it's not too far from here. And should anything happen, your safety will be my top priority. That is the least of my concerns right now. I can't make promises outside my control. You have a bit of time to decide what you should do. It'll be some time before the whole group can move up here anyways, so please, decide by then. You can't be serious. I wish that was the case, it seems like life's dealt you some unfair cards once more. At the very least, I can delay a bit and misdirect around your home. If it goes well, we'll stall and keep them out of this area for as long as possible, I can promise you that. I heard everything, it is time for you to return. Thank you, goddess, for sparing me. Say your goodbyes. On inches closer, closer to me in arm's reach. For some reason, I've got this feeling that this will be my last time we will ever see each other. Yet. He straightens up and looks at me, ser at me seriously once more. May you find love and be filled with eternal happiness, as love is the only thing that keeps us going. Uh, deep down, I search my soul and feelings. What I come up with is... Sincerity. May you be filled with eternal happiness, truly. Thank you, and with much farewell. He turns to give eye and gives a low bow. May you continue to protect us. We will take our leave. Do not forget your promise. Of course, goddess. He whispers to me. I sincerely hope to not find you here tomorrow. So I wish you all a good night. Farewell. As we watch them slowly shrink into the distance, an ancient, an ancient, uh, ancient, anxious feeling turns tumultuously in my chest. Did I really hear everything? I turn to glance at her, but she leaves quickly. Jinha's hands come down on my shoulder instead. We will figure, figure something out. I nod half-heartedly, her words doing little to ease the dread. Once again, our life together is about to change.